for that. So um, this is the Mathematica notebook that's provided for uh, kind of to supplement this lab handout. And really, again, this was kind of just for background. Hopefully, you get some ideas on terms of your. Remember, when you're writing your report, we want an application. So why are we measuring the magnetic field strength? Why are magnetic fields important? Again, it doesn't have to be my research. It could be MRIs. There's a lot of different. Um, uh, there's a ton of different uh, cooling. Magnetic fields are really, really important in a lot of different applications. So that's kind of the, the purpose, uh, again, at this lab. And we're comparing how does the theory uh, match with the, our experimental uh, measurements. So uh, this is the Mathematica notebook that you're kind of given, the kind of student version. So we're dealing with Helmholtz coils, comparing magnetic field strengths. And again, I start to define in here some of these equations that we've been introduced uh, here. So this is just our mu naught defining. Our B sub X, shifting enter, shift enter. Uh, this is our general equation. Again, it has a function of X. So B sub X, our Helmholtz coil, this is the one that we're going to work with. Helm, which is going to be 2 times B sub X, because we have our two coils. So I need to create a magnetic field strength of at least 10 milliteslas at the center of my apparatus. So this means at, at an X value of R divided by 2. That's the center of my apparatus, as we kind of talked about last time. So this is the center of the coil, but the center of my apparatus is right here. So in this, in my apparatus here, this is in the center. So at the center of those kind of coils. Again, we're looking at only the 2D state, so you don't have to worry about those three other coils. So I want it at the center of my apparatus. So I want to create a pair of coils. The number of turns is 500 turns of wire. So the nominal value of N is 500 turns of wire. Luckily, Created an apparatus in my lab. We're going to use DC crown amplifiers to amplify the current to send the coils. We're going to measure the current with a vernier high current sensor. And we're going to measure the magnetic field strength with a vernier go direct three axis magnetic field sensor. So uh, there's some other kind of key details about this experiment. So I wound the coils myself. Help of an undergraduate student, confident I hit 500 turns, plus or minus one turn. So I've only measured this once. So that's a key thing. So my uncertainty is plus or minus one. We'll see which bias or precision. I call this a radius of 17 centimeters. Measure with a ruler with millimeter tick marks. K. <laughs> I will measure the magnetic field at five different distances x, where an x value of zero corresponds to the center of a single coil. So r over two is the center of the two coil setup. So just what we've kind of talked about previously. You can see these distances in the attached files. We're going to look at those in a second. Of current magnetic field uh, measurement values. We will measure distances at x in centimeters. So this is the distance x in centimeters. So the first, the data file where it's dash one is going to be at an x value of zero. So at the center of the coils, not at the center of my apparatus. Then two, one centimeters, three, two centimeters, four, five centimeters, five, eight point five centimeters, which is 17 divided by two, just so that you uh, are aware. So this is going to be that last value uh, of five, that last measurement is at the center of our apparatus, r over two. So the current files will be named I-1, and that will be the current at distance 1, so where x is equal to 0. Magnetic field T1 will be the magnetic field at a distance 1, so again, magnetic field at x equals 0. So we are going to measure the current magnetic field for 10 seconds, sampling rate of 10 samples per second. The DAC, unfortunately, this time did not record time, so you'll only have values of current. So for the current values, they're in amps. For the magnetic field strength, they are in milliteslas already. So, uh, but again, I would convert to Teslas, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So we need to calculate the total uncertainty, uh, uh, the total uncertainty uh, of the experimental and theoretical magnetic field calculations at different distances of X. Are they distinct? So let's go ahead and I'm going to make a little sub notebook. So theory, and I'm going to make another one experimental. And then we're going to do experimental first, but so let's go ahead and pull our data in. So I've put it already on my, here we go, Helmholtz coils. So here's my current data. So I'm going to do control C. But the current, as we mentioned, they're going to be used for the theoretical calculation. So my current list, actually I'm just going to take a C list. C equals this. I'm going to we'll work that in just a second. So I'm going to shift enter. I'm going to use my T list. Because T, Tesla, magnetic fields, uh, again, you could change it whatever you want. It's, it's not a huge deal. So bring those in here. Let's go ahead and put those in 
here. There we go. So let's deal with the experimental. We'll do a little bit later. So actually, let's deal with experimental first. <laughs> no, I've changed my mind. Uh, so we need to, actually, we don't even need this equation because this gives us our value directly. So let's import. So I'm going to import t list one data. Here we go. Let's pull out the first data set. Actually, and let's actually before we do that, let's flatten one. It has that extra parentheses, and I don't want to deal with that. How about this? Oops. Okay. Always useful. Don't. Actually, yeah, we need to. We don't need to flatten that list. We need to flatten after the import. So let's do this. Flatten. Let's do one. So this is my first data set. So this is, again, at t equals one, that means where x equals zero. So let's look at this equation here. What happens as x increases to the strength of my magnetic field, i.e. as I go from the center of my, from here, as I go to here? Well, the center of the coat, like, that's right where your magnetic field is being generated. That should be the strongest. So let's look at a value of 5. So actually, we can look at this. Let's take a look at the mean. Or you could, again, you could plot this. Let's do this line plot. Again, this is not as a function of time. This is going to be as a function of the number of data points. So you need to convert that to time if you want to. So that's not 100 seconds, obviously. So that's that. How about, let's look at our other values. Let's look at our last value. Again, you might want to include a plot of the raw data, just as you did previously in the last lab, to get give people an idea of what you're working with here. So we can see here. But we don't want that, actually, because, uh, again, these are the same runs. Let's look. Instead, uh, let's do, I'm just going to change here. So this is importing the first file. I want to look at the last file, 5. Pretty big difference, right? So, again, the orange, the second one is our orange. So as my distance increases, there's a difference. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure that everything makes sense uh, in the world. So this looks good to me. So let's go ahead and pull it out. So. How am I going to figure out the total uncertainty in this measurement of magnetic field? Well, what are these values in? They're in milliteslas already. I would go ahead and convert this. I want this in teslas. So this is just my data set. So this is my magnetic field in teslas. So how do I calculate total uncertainty? Well, at this particular distance, x, what's going to be the, uh, the uncertainty here? Well, I have a series of measurements. Well, let me go ahead and take or figure out the total the precision uncertainty. So I could do just like what we did previously in this lab. I'm going to take the mean of this data set, and I'm going to do five of those means. Table. Go from I. Oh, no, I don't want that. I want to make sure I put it right here. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to do this for that. I from one to length of this. So those are my five means. I could take the means of the means, and then that would be my value here. So that would be the point. Again, this is just uh, this would be my point, my plot, uh, that center, you know, the point in my error bar plot. So I'm going to make this a mean list. So TM list. I could do another table and get those values for all of them. And we'll actually look at that in a second. But let's just keep this right here for now because this is just the first x value. First data set, first point. So I can do the same thing. So instead of taking the mean, if I take the standard deviation, and if I multiply by what is my magic number for uh, five data uh, at a 95% confidence interval, hopefully you remember 2.776. So my t alpha over nu, so it's t of u25 with a nu of four equals 2.7. 776. Hopefully that is the case. If not, people can correct me. <laughs> so that's our two-sided interval here. Two -sided tests. So for precision error, we need our t alpha over 2 times the standard deviation of those points divided by what? Square root of n, which is going to be, there's 5. Actually, we can make this more general. I can do the length of this. And we can, let's make sure. It's always good to double check before you 
So I want to do the length and confirm that it's five. Five, there we go. So I got that. And those are my standard deviations there uh, for each of those uh, measurements. And actually, what we could do is make it even a little bit uh, kind of more straightforward. Because uh, actually, it is doing something a little bit interesting here. So instead of that, I want deviation. It's because I just want this. So actually, it's actually doing something a little bit uh, ahead of time. So I want to do this, excuse me, for this. Divided by square root. Ah, here we go. That was the problem. It was that code is fine. Square root of the length of this tape. So let me make sure. There we go. And let's just double check that. So this. Again, it's always useful to kind of take this out. Sometimes, again, I get a little bit too eager, and people can definitely get a little bit too eager to kind of just try to run the code, but always double check, make sure everything looks pretty good. Yep, and if I divide that by, let's double check our answer, and that looks good. So, this is my precision uncertainty. Uh, if I relab relabel that, I don't want that to be TM list. I don't want to do that to be T precision. So I want this to be TM list. So this is it for this data set, for this first, again, this first X value, this is the value that I get for my TM list and my precision error. So you could kind of change this or you can create another table. So this is why table functions are so useful. I could go from here, J, J, J from one to length, TM list. Whoops, that is not good. Uh, I'm going to, not TM list, excuse me, my T list. So those are my five different means. So you could do that, you could get your precision error. Anyways, you could get a little bit uh, into that. So that's precision error for the experimental values. But what about the theoretical errors? Well, what am I measuring with? So I'm measuring these, the way I get these magnetic field strains is I take my, uh, where is it right here? I have my, Vernier go direct three axis magnetic field sensor. Well, that magnetic field sensor will have some uncertainty in the in terms of the resolution of the magnetic field that it can measure. So I need to go look that up and plug that in in order to get those values. So that's experimental. Theory is a little bit more complicated, and let's get to Helm. So what is my nominal value? Uh, or what do I have like so let's let's think. Do I have precision error in R here? No, I, I, but I might have some uncertainty, right? So, because I measure the value of R with a ruler with millimeter tick marks. I also measure the distance X with that same ruler. So there might be some uncertainty there. But I don't have a list of those measurements of R, X, or N. So hopefully that'll give you some hints. Now we do have some list of measurements for uh, my current. So I'm going to have to look at those current values. So let's do the same thing. So flatten. Import C list one data comma one. Let's pull out the first one. So again, for that first distance, these are my values for my current. I could take the mean. So I have a mean there. I'm going to do it for again the same thing. So I'm going to have some precision error. Hopefully, people will remember. Not hopefully. We don't want precision error, but let's look at it here. Here, I'm gonna have some precision error in these measurements. Uh, so in my again, this is all my theoretical calculation, but we have some measurements of current that we're given. So there's gonna be some precision error here. You're gonna have to kind of calculate that one out. So what else? What do we have? Do we have any uncertainty in the number of? Uh, so this takes into account your precision error. And let's think about if there's any other kind of types of precision error that might be occurring in this lab. But what about our uh, theoretical or our bias uncertainty in this theoretical measurement? Well, uh, I need to figure out, is there some uncertainty in the number of coil windings? So you might want to read through uh, here. Is there some uncertainty in the X measurements? 
What about the uh, R measurements? What about current? We're measuring current with this vernier high current sensor, so there might be some uncertainty there. So, in general, we're going to have to do the helm. You know what, what's happening next? My partials for that bias calculation. So the helm with respect to R, derivative of helm with respect to X, derivative of helm with respect to I, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to have to figure out, again, for each distance, uh, and each distance X, you're going to have to calculate what's the precision error, what's the bias error in these calculations. And you're going to plug in, uh, again, for the nominal values. So again, for the first distance, it'd be this. And then your nominal values for your n, your r, and whatever your x is with the, those uncertainties. And you're going to calculate uh, what is the magnetic field theoretically given those values at all those different distances x, considering precision error, bias error, the whole uh, kit and caboodle. So make sure that you're doing um, that, every, that your, your units are uh, basically correct here. That's kind of the big, big, big thing. So make sure the units cancel where they, uh, where they may. Uh, if you have precision error, it might be useful to convert to uh, total uncertainty. Uh, and in terms of the deliverables of this um, this lab, you might want to look, or again, very, very similar. Show the plot, um, show these calculations, show these partial derivatives, at least symbolically in your report. You need to have those. Uh, explain how you ca can calculate that. Where is the precision error? Where is their bias error? And at the end, you want a plot of the magnetic field strength, both the theory and the experimental, as a function of this distance x. So x on the y on the x on the x axis, and then your magnetic field here. Do they overlap? Do they not? What's happening here? Is precision error dominating? Is bias error dominating? You know the procedure from here on out. So uh, have fun with this. Uh, if you have any questions, again, you want to always run, uh, show some of the raw data that you collect. So some of these magnetic field measurements, magnetic field is a function of time. Maybe some current, but that might not, that might be more appropriate in the appendix. So there's not too many um, basically graphs uh, that you want to focus on here. But again, it's the key analysis is that total uncertainty. So walk. There's lots of things that are going on in this lab. Uh, lots of different uncertainties. So walk your reader through that in your report. So uh, I will see you all in lab next time, and I hope you have a good day uh, and have fun uh, with magnetic fields. There's nothing that could go wrong. Uh, maybe sometimes you could burst the. Uh, your current <laughs> and basically knock out all the lights in Corey uh, as I've done before. Anyways, uh, I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.